Good morning or good afternoon, Year 5, depending on when you're watching this video. So yesterday there was a big fight with Brendan the bully, and they all got marched back into school. So let's see what's happened. I couldn't really hear what they were saying because my ears had become so hot, but I think I heard the words ashamed. Never in the history of this school and parents being said, we all got a detention for fighting, even Amet. But it wasn't all bad. When my ears had cooled down, Josie told me that when Mrs Sanders had heard Brendan the Bully's song, she had given him and Liam and Chris two weeks' detention and said she would be calling their parents too. But as it turned out, Brendan the Bully's punishment was more serious than he could have ever imagined because by that evening, Brendan the Bully and Mr Irons were breaking the news. On every single channel and, on, and in all the weekend papers, headlines like video of bully attacking refugee boy sparks outrage and teacher stands aside as school bully threatens refugee boy and school bully talks trash refugee child were everywhere. So that by Monday morning, the school was surrounded by even more cameras and reporters and vans with satellite dishes on their roofs than before. Brendan the bully and Liam and Chris didn't come into school for three whole days after they had broken the news. And when they did, their parents came in with them and made them apologise to Emmett in front of everyone at morning assembly. They still had to do detention every day for two weeks too. It made everyone glad that they had been caught by the news people. Brendan the bully still looked at Emmett with a horrible scowl on his face whenever he thought no one could see him. And one time in the lunch hall, he walked right up to Emmett with his fist clenched as if, as if he wanted to punch him. But instead of being scared, Amet just looked at him with his lion eyes and grinned. After that, Brendan the bully never went near Amet ever again. And just when he thought things couldn't get any worse, that week, Mr Irons and his whistling nose disappeared too, and they were never heard of again. Boring Miss Stevens had to take over his class, which probably made them just as miserable as they had been before. But no one else really cared about that, because now everyone was free to scream and laugh and shout as much as they wanted to at break times again. So we did, except we all screamed and laughed, shouted louder and longer and harder than we'd ever done before. Because when you're playing with your friends and don't have any bullies to worry about anymore, that's exactly what you should be doing. So we're up to chapter 24 now, year five, the interview. Although Brendan the bully wasn't bullying Amet anymore and Mr Irons has gone, was gone, sorry, I was still feeling worried. Eight whole days had passed since our emergency adventure and Amit's parents still hadn't been found. And even though Mrs Sanders had said the Queen couldn't really help us, I knew that deep down we were all still hoping she would do something. The hardest thing was trying to make Amit understand that the Queen hadn't been able to help. Every morning, as soon as he would see us in the playground, he would ask us, the Queen will find today, yes? After a few days of telling, trying to tell him no and seeing him look sad, we began to shrug and say, Maybe as hopefully as we could. The gates will have been the gates will have been shut last Friday, said Josie quietly, as she gave her ponytail an angry pull. Even though we didn't usually have PE on Thursdays, Mrs. Khan had decided to treat us, so we were all sitting on a bench waiting for the climbing frame and feeling sad. Emma, your turn, said Tom, pointing to the free space at the climbing frame. Emma ran over to the bars and leapt up to the highest rug he could reach. He was as good at climbing as he was at football. When I asked him how he could jump so high and climb so fast, he shrugged and said, Fences. If the gates are shut already and no one's helping us find Amit's family, why do you think the reporters are still here? Asked Michael, carefully patting the sides of his afro so that it would stay in place when it was his turn in the climbing frame. It was a question all of us had been asking ourselves, because even though there were fewer reporters than last week, they were all still asking us questions about Amit whenever they saw us. Maybe they think we'll, we'll try and do something else to help Amit find his family and they'll just wait waiting for us to see what it is, suggested Josie. For the rest of the day, we tried our best not to think about the reporters and the newspaper appeal and the Queen. But on the way back home, a reporter suddenly shouted out, Kids, what do you think of Mr Fry's views about refugee children like Amit? And another one shouted, Do you have a response? Do you want to say something back to him? We all said, No comment just like we always did, but we gave each other a puzzled look. Ooh, year five. So this, uh, the chapter's called The Interview, so there's definitely an interview on the card. So I wonder if the children speak to the reporters after all. Over and out, Miss Davis.